Let me guess, you have created a fantastic UX project, but you're worried about presenting it in an easy digestible format that effectively showcases your UX skills. That's okay because in this video, we'll be diving into a UX case study template that is not just only a one size fits all, but I'll show you how to use it as a foundation and customize it to make your own projects. I have created this template in a previous video on Notion. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it in the description below, but it's pretty much the same template, but it's reformatted and redesigned in Figma. This template is not designed to be overly rigid as we don't want all of our case studies to be exactly the same. How boring. Instead, consider this as a flexible guide, allowing you to incorporate the key aspects of your project tailored to his unique needs. Unfortunately, I cannot share any of my own case studies because of a little thing called a non-disclosure agreement, aka an NDA. However, I have included a mock project just so you can gain an idea and understanding of how you can change this template and make it your own. With that said, let's jump into Figma. So when you first jump into the template, you will see a cover, an introduction of how to get into the template, the template itself and the example project. The template may seem a bit overwhelming to begin with. Uh, there is quite a few screens in here, but when I explain it, it'll make a bit more sense. First of all, everything is set up with auto layout and is also set up with some textiles. So we've got textiles and color styles. All these are completely customizable, depending on what variables you change here it will automatically adjust and change the actual template. So I want you to consider this template as a wireframe. You have the freedom to customize it however you feel fit. Like I said, it is all set up with auto layout and you can change all the colors and fonts, whatever you choose to your preferences. It is a straightforward case study. So it starts off with a introduction screen. So on this screen, you can write the name of the case study. You can write who is presented by, you can put in the date and you can even pop in an image if you choose to. After that, we move over to the table of content. So this is where you will fill out and put in all uh, the different pages that are involved in this. I highly recommend you have this so it's easier for recruiters to go through and know exactly where pages are and then skip if they wanted to. You do have the option again to put an image here, you don't have to, completely up to you. Then we're going to talk about the project summary. And this is where you'll just outline quickly what the actual project is about and one or two sentences is absolutely fine and you can also pop in an image here as well. Then we want to talk about our roles and responsibilities. Again, you can add in a, an image, you can put your roles, the company that you worked for, what it actually was, so it's a website or an application and the year that you completed this in. Next, it emphasizes on the problem statement and solution, aka goals. So very quickly, we just want to outline the problem statement, the solution that we come up with and how we achieve this, which is the goals. There's also another page as well where you can outline the goals, um, make it more fancy, make it more easily digestible format, just make sure the goals are actually collected. Then we want to talk about the business impact. So what do those goals do for the business? Again, this is something that's usually left out of case studies, but this is really important because business impact is one of the biggest things that you will be driving towards when you work in the UX industry. Next, we want to outline the approach. So again, this is following the same type of format where you can put in an image or you can write the approach that you are going to take. And then we want to write down how we're going to measure success. So how are we going to track back to the goals that we set in the previous slides? Measuring success, again, is really, really important when you're working within the UX industry. The reason why we do this is to make sure that anyone who is reading this case study is able to get digestible format in one snapshot so they don't have to read the full case study in order to understand what's going on. Next, we want to generate our evidence through research, design and testing. Again, this will change depending on which type of project you're doing, what type of research that you're doing, whether you're doing high fidelity designs or low fidelity designs. All this part of the stage is all documented in this place and I have split it out in three separate sections where we can write about the research, the design and testing. Again, these pages are optional. Include research, include design, and you include testing, if you've done it. 
And then we have some other optional bits as well, which can come within the case study. You don't have to use these. These are just notes basically to say, if you do have them, then I'll recommend put them in. If you don't, then that's totally fine. We don't all have access to our prototypes. I would suggest putting in technical limitations. If, you, if this is a real case study, you will definitely come up against technical limitations and it's a good place to actually write this down because when you go for another role or if you're hiring, uh, technical limitations is one of the biggest things that stops us from achieving that perfect project. Then if you want to outline your next steps, you definitely can. Again, this is optional, but what isn't optional is right at the end, we want to prove the solution. And this is where we want to outline and say what we did had positive or negative impact if that's what happened. But this is where we prove the solution and usually using things as in a format of numbers is the best way to get this information across. But again, that's completely up to you. This is your case study. And obviously you do have the options to pop in images and things like that as well. And then finally, we want to end on a thank you page. Again, you can do whatever you want with this page, make it personal, it's totally up to you. Now I just wanna jump straight over into the example project just to give you a good understanding of how we're gonna use this template to create a case study. So this is the example project. Again, I'm using the template how I have outlined it. So the first page is obviously a cover. So first of all, we have the cover. Then we have the table of contents. So there's a project summary, roles and responsibilities, research, key findings, design and testing. You get it. There's a nice image of how the product looks. Then we talk about the project summary. Again, I've added in some images just to make it look a bit more presentable. I changed the colors. I've added this lovely little green tone now just to bring it forward. I've added in some nice pictures just to, you know, show my personality. This is the roles and responsibilities. So as a project designer at a company called Flyees, which is completely fake, but yeah, this is just to show you. Then we go into the research. So again, I showed a quick example of what the research looks like. This again is taken from the Figma community. Again, there's a link in the description and I've also tagged the, the the creator of this. So if you want to check out their template, again, there's a link in the description. Then we talk about the key findings. So there was a complex navigation, there was information overload, and there was also transparency issues. Again, these are not real, but this is just for this. And then I outlined a quick structure of what we're going to do. Then it goes into the design and testing phase. So the design, we talk about uh, what we wanted to do. We show some of the screens, and then we talk about usability testing and then proving the solution. So the key findings improved user certification, it increased conversions and enhanced trust. And then by focus on user research, design, iteration, transparency, the Fly Easy Flight Booking app successfully transformed its user experience. So that's a quick example of how you can use this project. Again, if you look at the two separate templates, they do look vastly different, but you know, they're using the same, same format. And this is exactly what you can do with this template. It's completely up to you and completely customizable on whatever way you want to use it. And then we end it. And that's it for this video. If you are interested in using this template, you can find it in the link in the description below. And then you can head straight over to the Figma community where you can duplicate and customize it to your preferences. If you do have any questions regarding this template or case studies in general, then please feel free to leave me some comments in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you didn't know already, I also offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring sessions over on my Super Peer. Again, there's a link in the description below. And I also have a newsletter called Handle where I send out UX related content every single month. So that's something you're interested in. Again, there's a link in the description below. And until next time, bye.